Can, can you explain to us why starting a business is so necessary for today's day and age? What are some of the reasons and benefits of starting your own business? I know I just did a video a couple of videos ago with Tom Hegna. Uh, John, Tom Hegna? Yeah, Tom Hegna. And it, I duetted one of our coaches, Matt Sapala's video when he interviewed Tom Hegna. And Tom Hegna was talking about the 100% food write-off. How you no, can no, eat that's out right Hag- That's not Tom Hagner, the Sammy oh, Bakins. Sam Bakins, right. This, so this I, guy, this guy, I, yes. This yeah, guy. I, I filed my taxes today. Mm. And let me tell you, it was beautiful. Mm. <laughs> it was beautiful. Yeah. And, and knowing how much money we made and the tax deductions that we received just mm. because we own a business, mm. let's, let, let's just say I'm so blessed that God gave me the courage to step outside of the military after 16 years and make that faith-based decision to start our own business. That way more money can go in my family's pocket instead of uncle Sam's pocket. So crazy, crazy. It's it's a blessing. So So I did my, I did my taxes uh, like two or three weeks ago. And so being, being an entrepreneur and working for yourself is a little different than what I've done over the years. I've had multiple businesses, but I've always had a nine to five. I've always worked in a traditional job. And so I brought my taxes to my accountant and I had made on my own as a, as my own small business, I made close to 50, $54,000. Mm-hmm. And then with my, with my day job, I made about the same, right? So I was, I cracked about six figures between the both and my, First impression, my my CPA, she was like, that's going to sting a little bit. That's going to hurt a little bit. But then we started getting into the numbers and we started breaking down all the deductions. By the end of our conversation, it was a beautiful thing, brother. It was a beautiful thing. I, I ended up even getting a little bit back. And and my goal was to just break break even, right? You no. just want to call it a wash on both sides. But we, we were able to work it out ethically, morally you know, the, do the right thing. And we were able to make a lot of tax write-offs because I owned a small business, writing off part of my car, part of my cell phone, eating out, travel expenses. It's a beautiful thing when you own your own business, man. It's a beautiful yep. thing. Yep. It's, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, it's, um, no, knowing the, the gym that we have here. And as, uh, I don't have the book here, but, as T. Harv Eckert says in Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, he says 50% of all the income you ever make as a W-2 employee will go to the government in the form of taxes. Mm, that's crazy. And I was, I was listening to, um, to a gentleman today. I can't remember his name while I was working out this morning. He said the, the tax book, the tax law is like three, 4,000 pages. He says, but only wow. the first 13 pages of it tell you about the taxes you have to pay. The other couple thousand pages show you how not to pay the taxes. The first the first thirteen pages tell you to pay. Wow! He said, so you really got to study the tax code so you can understand how not to pay the taxes. Yes. So you can do business on it. So it, it was explained like this, Mark. And, and this this when, when I heard this this morning, think about this: business and money is like it's like a circuit. Like a circuit switch, okay. So as long as the 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 um, the electrons and stuff are moving in a forward direction, there's power. It has power. But as soon as the circuit is closed off, it loses all power. So ultimately, that's what happened to money when they took it off the gold standard. Right. Okay? So so it's it's now a currency that can be printed. So money has to keep being moved in a forward manner. Mm-hmm. Sitting in your bank account, it has no power. Mm. So you got to put that that money in a place where it can co- constantly be moving to generate power, which is more money. Yeah. So, so I was like, okay, where's most Americans' money sitting? It's sitting in a bank account, right? Mm-hmm. Getting zero point zero three percent interest. Yeah. Where do you think the the bank puts their money? Do you think, Mark? Do you think the banks put people's money in a certificate of deposit account? You would think so. But that's not true. That's not what how, happens. How about a money market account? 
You would hope they do. You would hope they would practice what they preach, right? You 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 would hope so because no, wait, we're talking about America. I know our banks our banks put our money in a four hundred one k or an IRA. No, nah, Mark. I think they really put it in a golden vault. It's just waiting on you to come in to the bank and get your money out. There you go. You see in the movies the big vault that opens up and all the stacks of cash. Our money yeah. is safely tucked away, right? Got got you. Let, let me show you guys where the banks really put your money. Okay. They put your money to work for them. Go to this website called bolicoli.com. Okay. Mm, Boli Coley. Boli stands for bank owned life insurance. Coley stands for corporate owned life insurance. Then I want you to click insurance services, click bank owned life insurance, and then click Boli facts and figures. Now check this out. Y'all about to be pissed off. Bank owned life insurance. There's 3,137 banks nationwide with assets between 100 million and 1 billion currently on Boli, bank owned life insurance, hmm. for a total of $180.6 billion. Hmm. Billion dollars. I, I got, got, got something else I'll show you. All right? Let me find it real quick. This That's will even crazy. piss you off even more. That's crazy. Okay. I, can't, I, can't, I can't make this stuff up, guys. And, and I see some people getting off because they're probably getting pissed off. But what I'm showing you right now is a freaking gold mine, if you understand. Now, now check this out. Now, what you're looking at right now is the top 100 institutions by asset, banking institutions by asset side, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and the list goes on. You see your bank on here? Boom, 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 yep. boom, boom. Now, check this out. Life insurance. J.P. Morgan Chase has $11.5 in life insurance. Bank of America, $22.3 billion in life insurance. Wells Fargo. Eighteen point eight billion in life insurance. Come on. So that money you're sticking in the bank, all they're doing is sticking in life insurance, getting the highs of the market, never losing, and giving you the breadcrumbs. Guys, if you want your money to work for you, you got to become money smart and start putting your money in an uninterrupted compound interest account using a properly structured, engineered, and designed life insurance policy, my friends. And where can Not I get the that? 401k. Say it again. And where can I get that? Well, you can get that from any a, a AAA rated life insurance company, uh, or you can click the link in our bios and request a free strategy session because you, you can't just go to a website, uh, to, a, to a website and get this thing. Okay. It's got to, you got to find an agent. It can't be any life insurance agent. It's got to be an agent that specializes in the strategy. If you call your local bank up, they're going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Right. We, we can give you a whole life. We can we can give you uh we can give you ten thousand dollar worth of bank bank whole life, uh but yeah, That's just click the link. Have a free strategy session, guys. Right? That's crazy. I met with one client today from Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, oh, we had nice. a little bit of had a little bit of mix up in our scheduling, a little schedule conflict, but we ended up getting on a, a call. She has a business that her and her husband has been running for the last eighteen years. It's a smart home products right do awesome. smart everything and so i said what's your what's your what's your net income for your business uh three to five million dollars a year i said oh mm -hmm. interesting okay cool i said well what do you guys bring in she's like what do you mean our draw like what what are we drawing because you as a as a business owner you can draw from your company and take a salary sure. so they're like eh, you know just something like 150k between the both of them so it's a you know, it's a, it's a decent living for, for Hawaii, but she was so intrigued when I told her, you can open up a policy, your business could be the owner and the payer, you could be the insured and guarantee that your business is protected for the rest of your life. And she was like blown away by it. And then she also does flipping on the side. So she was like, you mean I could take a hundred thousand dollars commission that I have from a house, from a home sale, put it in my insurance contract, turn around and pull that money out and use it for uh, to put another down payment on a house. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's how you become your own bank. We have to structure it certain ways. We have to make sure all the numbers work out. But of course you can do that. Her mind was absolutely blown when I told her about yeah. that. Man. It's beautiful that's when it. you teach people how, how to do things and they're actually enlightened, you know? That's it, yeah. And and I, I know you and I, we've been coming across a lot of people that uh, they're in that position. They recently sold a home. They recently took some equity out of their home because. If you got equity in your home right now and it's just sitting there, 
you need to do something with it, guys. It's, yep. uh, your home value is not going to stay high for too much longer. The housing do market bubble will burst, and you're going to lose all of that. So take the equity out of your home and put it into a property structure life insurance policy or indexed annuity that way it can be working for you yep. okay that's you other people's money uh in a positive manner that's the good debt okay but um but we've been coming across a lot of people that recently sold businesses sold their homes uh came into an inheritance of some sort whether it be a lottery um, um an auto claim uh maybe, maybe somebody passed away and left them uh some land or something like that an inheritance uh, and they just don't know where to put it, man. It's just sitting in the account. They got millions sitting in the bank account. They're like, bro, it's not growing. So, yeah. so where we, I, I love being able to educate people and show them what is out there other than the oh, stock yeah. market. Because you let Charles Schwab, Merle Lynch, Edward Jones know that you got a couple million, they are gonna like. I, I'm not gonna say harass you, but they're they're not they're gonna pressure you and pressure you and pressure you to put it in the stock market stock because market, yeah. they, get, they get paid for money under management. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or assets under management, and they're going to charge between one and two, uh, two, two and a half percent fees yeah. on the lump sum. Um, mm-hmm. And that fee is going to continue to go up, guys. Uh, we educate you uh, on a financial strategy, a concept, an idea called the indexing strategy, where mm-hmm. you're going to get the highs of the market just as you would with the financial advisor in the market, but you never have to lose, guys. Mm-hmm. The advisor, just go to them. If your money's currently sitting with a financial advisor, just ask them. Can you guarantee me that I'm never going to lose my principal? And if they can't guarantee you that, why are you with them? Right. Exactly. You can't afford to lose anything, guys. You remember 2007, 2008, when the stock market dropped 58.67%? Took five years for people to break even. That could have been five years. They could have been compounding their income, compounding their hard-earned money, doubling it. Yep. Yep. No. It's crazy. It's, uh, we we got to learn from 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 either our own experiences and failures, or we can learn from other people's experiences and failures. I hope you choose to learn from somebody else's experiences and failures. Learn Study. from other people. Yes, absolutely. Coach, I read a I read a, a a little bit of a scary article today from a, a business website, and it talked about the inverted yield curve. Have you ever heard of that before uh, when it comes to our, our bonds? Yeah, absolutely. And so they're saying that, you know, normal, normal yield curve is, you know, uh, higher interest rate bonds and lower interest rate bonds have a good gap between them. But right now, the longer interest bonds are starting to meet the, 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 how do I explain it the right way? The, the shorter term bonds and the curve is starting to invert, right? And so they say when there's an inverted curve that takes place, that's a key sign for a recession. Have you, have you, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it did it in 2020 and the market dropped 40% in 22 days. Mm-hmm. Right now we're about 0.25% difference. Yep. I think the gap on Monday, 10 year, 10 year yield was 2.1 and the two year yield was up uh, about 1% to that. Making yeah, a spread so, of about 0.28%. That's scary things, man. Scary times we're in right now. No, it's, it's about to get terrible. Let me show you. Let's see if I can find. Um, and that that's why I, I know. I know I had a gentleman who's a client of mine already on here. Um, if he's still watching, this, this is me indirectly talking to you. Okay. F- father turned r- real high age, 90 plus years old. Has well over 500K sitting in his IRA. His father told him that Oh, it's okay. I just put 90% of all my money into the bonds. Into the bonds. That's not even safe. The bond yeah. market is going to lose too. Because of that yield curve. Correct. Correct. We got multiple bubbles at the same time. For one of the first times in history, you got the auto bubble. Yep, there, there it is. You got the auto bubble. You got the real estate bubble. It's... Um, 
is another one right here. So the yield curve is this right here when the line, two lines become inverted, yep. right? Traditional is supposed to have a good gap between it, but when they start to cross right there, that's like a that's like a death cross in the stock market, man. That's that's dangerous territory we're starting to starting to venture into. And that when when two thousand what was it two thousand eight around two thousand eight it happened, right? You said, or was it around yeah, two thousand? Yep. So so it's two thousand seven. Yeah, 2007 happened, and then the market crashed, the housing bubble crashed, and that's where we went into recession, and it took about 10 years for everything to get back to normal. Yep. I'm, I'm about to show you something that for everybody who says, uh, nah, we're we're good. It's, it's not, we're not in a bubble. I'm about to show you something that's going to throw you. So I got a quick question real quick before you go yep. forward. I got a question about can you invest personal IRAs into an IUL? Uh, what, what would be your response to that? Mm, all, all, all depends. Like, like I said, it's, it's it's tough to answer ask or answer questions without knowing the entire story, the entire situation. Uh, the best thing to do is just click the link in the bio. Uh, wh whoever is asking this question, schedule a free strategy session. Um, right now, we're just educating, okay? And we want to educate you. Uh, all depends on your situation what your, your needs are, what your goals are for retirement uh, will depend on what's best for your, for your thing. So uh, I'll have to find out, is there a surrender penalty? Uh, is there any fees or charges to withdraw it? There may be other, excuse me, tax-free options available to you, but just click the link in the bio and schedule that free strategy session. That, that's, that's the best thing to do on, 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 on a strategy. So, so check this out. I'm going to, I'm going to share this. So we remember 2007, 2008, right guys? Yes, sir. They were selling homes, no income, no income, no job approved, mama, daddy, grandma, everybody. in Ninja the family loans, was getting ninja. Ninja. Ninja loans, no income, no job approved. The, the federal interest rate was zero. It was like I got very one. close to zero. That was my very first house. To, my first house. I got, I got, I got one too. I got one too. $315,000, two bedroom, two bath yep. condo in Chicago, Illinois. Yep. And, um, and then what happened was, now now tell me if this sounds familiar, the, in, the federal interest rate was darn near zero. And then they started increasing the flexible interest rate, uh, interest rate hopefully to, to lower inflation. And uh, that's when the bubble burst. And these people that bought these mortgages at darn near zero raised the flexible interest rate. They couldn't afford the homes anymore. People yep. just like now are putting four sale and foreclosure signs. Yep. So think about this. They go, th this is about to blow your mind, guys, right? And I just want to let you guys know, I am not shifting you, okay? This is real stuff, okay? So I'm, I'm going to show you a couple different things. So this is Los Angeles. This is for Los Angeles, the Case Shiller. That was housing bubble in 2007, 2008. Market dropped 58.69%. This is the housing bubble now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is uh, crazy. Check out Seattle. Housing bubble 2007-2008. Boom. Housing bubble now. That's insane. We're, we're just repeating ourselves. It's, re we're, we're, it's a re repetition of what happened in 2007. Uh, but I got some guys, some big investors that are saying the housing markets are going to continue to go up for the next few years, that it's not reached its peak yet. Because they have something called investor confidence that the government's going to keep printing off trillions of dollars. Listen here. All right. How can I say this? If I was in the real estate industry, okay, if I was in the real estate industry selling homes, if I was in the mortgage department selling loans, why the hell would I tell you the bubble's going to burst and, the, and you're going to lose all the home value if I'm trying to sell you a freaking home? Right. Exactly. And then I, if, I, if I tell all my real estate agents, yeah, the bubble's about to burst, you're about to be out of a freaking job. Everybody scatter like roaches. They'll go into in other careers. Yep. It, it's, guys, be very careful who you listen to, guys. Be very mm -hmm. careful who you listen to. Some of them are telling their self to lies because they don't want to accept the truth about about what's about to happen. Right. So it's uh, we we just uh, we just recruited a new agent, or Matt did, 
Uh, he, he's a prior major for the uh, U.S. Air Force. Used to be a fighter pilot, wow. and he's his, his brother was in mortgages, and he brought his he he brought him into mortgages, and uh, we were having cigars the other night. He's like, "Yep," because Matt asked. He said, "What's the language? Uh, what's the language in the mortgage the mortgage industry right now?" He said, "He said, yeah, we're getting ready for the for the crash." So oh, okay. they know they're just crash. not telling anybody. <laughs> They're just not telling anybody. They're they're talking amongst themselves, but they're not telling anybody about it. So that's very interesting. G- good looks. Last housing bubble, the price jumped three to four times. How about this time? Only a bit over two times. What price jumped three to four times? Think, think about that. What price jumped? Because here's what's happening, guys. People are, have been for the past two years buying homes 20, 30% over asking price, housing value. They've been buying homes 20, 30% over asking price at a zero, almost a darn near 0% interest rate. Mm-hmm. They're paying $400,000 for a $200,000 home already. The feds are about to increase the flexible interest rate. Think about this six times this year. Six times this year for a total of 150 basis points. That's an extra 1.5%. Most of these people are not going to be able to afford these homes that they just purchased. Right. Think about that. Yeah, in, in, in California, I, I know that's normal in California. I got a lot of clients in California. They got they sell a home, they got a million dollars sitting in the bank account. We, we, we get a lot of that in Cali. Not every place is going to be affected by it. Not not every zip code is going to be like you, you can be like here in Dallas. Maybe fifty zip codes affected by it. Yeah. But maybe twenty that's not affected by it, depending on the build up and the structure uh, right. of, of the of the uh, the area. So some places are are good to withstand that. And some places won't even feel it at all. So, but but for the average middle class American, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar home, they're the ones that's going to feel it. I mean, Cali is crazy, man. You you, you get like, you, I mean, for for four or five thousand dollars, you get like a, a three hundred square foot loft. It's crazy. And Robert Kiyosaki says that buying a home for yourself is the biggest waste of investment that you could have anyway. Yes. So does Grant Cardone. He says never buy a home for yourself. If you're gonna buy a home, buy a rental property or or even a commercial rental property if you're gonna venture down that area. But right now, why would you buy at the at the top of the market? Robert Kiyosaki makes fun of people saying, "You bought a home, you want to you want a cat, you want cash flow, but you're buying at the top of the market right now. Are you crazy? Right? You'll have opportunity to buy a home over the next five years, ten years. Don't do it at the top of the market. You know, it's crazy. Hey, let, let me let me see if I can share this. Let me let me see if I can share this real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna share the video that we shared at the Wealth Workshop. What you think? I right, said, so take this guys, out, guys. Guys, if you haven't done so, follow the host, follow Jesse, uh, follow me. Uh, and if you want a free financial strategy, click the links in our bio. Go ahead. Click that bad boy. So so check this out, guys. So that's why please listen to what Richard Duncan has to say. A few months ago, the Fed was still creating $120 billion every month. And then in November, they said they were going to start tapering that, reducing that by $15 billion a month. But the very next month in December, they said they're going to double that and reduce it by $30 billion a month. And that meant that it's going to come to a complete stop. The money printing is going to end totally early next month. No more printing next month. No more printing. And then the real blow came because in early January, they started letting it be known that they were planning to do the opposite. Instead of printing a lot of money through quantitative easing, they're going to start destroying a lot of money through quantitative tightening. Mm. Now, when they print money, that pushes asset prices up. When they destroy money, that tends to make asset prices fall. And how do they, the stock market could how do they destroy money? How do they destroy money? Well, they destroy money because when they print money, they buy bonds with that money. And normally, when the bonds mature, they just roll them over and buy a similar kind of bond. But they destroy money by essentially selling those bonds. Hmm. And when the Fed, what happens is the bonds mature and the Fed doesn't roll them over. Someone else has to buy the bond. So the Fed gets its money back. And when the Fed gets money back, that money just 
evaporates. The Fed doesn't need to keep any money because it can make all the money it wants anytime it wants to. Hmm. So it's a bit complicated to explain in just a few sentences, but the bottom line is it's the opposite of quantitative easing. Quantitative tightening destroys money, and that tends to make stock prices fall. And we're about to get a heavy dose of quantitative tightening coming into effect within the next couple of months. That's and it's going to make it harder and harder for mom and pop to go buy that house or spec they're going to flip. And isn't that going to drive inflation through the roof? Well, they think the opposite. When they, instead of printing money, that's the thing that normally causes inflation. It stimulates the economy. It creates growth. Mm-hmm. But when they destroy the money, that tends to make asset prices fall, like stocks and property. So people are less rich, so they spend less money. And if they spend less money, then prices tend to fall. Hmm. So that's why they're doing this. They're worried now that the inflation rate has moved up to 7%. 7.9. percent taking steps to bring it back down. But what they may find is this could cause a significant stock market crash. And already last month, the S&P fell almost 10%, and NASDAQ fell 15% between the 4th and the 27th Ridiculous. last month. And some That's of the high crazy. clients got hit a whole lot harder than that. Look at Meta or what Facebook, whatever else I like call now, they tanked. It lost 26% in a day, destroying $230 billion of American wealth. There goes your 401k, sweethearts. And that's why I spoke <laughs> out against 401ks forever. Is saying is the way America grew is because we produce products. Now we don't produce products, we create mm. credit for debt. Am I correct on that one? That's right. Instead of our economy being driven by investment and savings, as it used to be, it's now driven by credit creation and consumption, and more credit creation and consumption. And that's been great. The problem is it requires credit growth to survive. Mm. If credit contracts, we have a depression. And that has made us dependent now on government borrowing and government mm. spending keep us out of depression. So if you're going to buy, you know, I mean, I don't know how many people, oh, I took your advice. I bought a house. I'm going to make some money. I said, at the top of the freaking market? There you go. Okay. <laughs> 401k came into existence in 1974. It was called ERISA. Yep. And I used to speak yeah. out against 401ks because I don't get censored with this one. But 401ks are like a condom. It gives you a false sense of security while you're being screwed. Do you know what I mean? And if this market crashes, when they raise these interest rates, if they do, you know, your 401k turns to 201k, just as you need to retire. All you old guys like me, hear what I'm saying? If they raise interest rates because they're going to stop inflation, your 401k may be toast. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Or if you're a millennial and you got mom and dad who are living in La La Land with their two 401ks, you might be in serious trouble. That video was created a couple months ago, okay? January, actually a month ago. He said, if they raise the flexible interest rate. So, so that's why, please listen. Because in Earth- let's, let's, let's go check out. Let's see if they are. Oh, ne- next week. Ne- next week they're raising. So... Let me make sure I get the right one. Yeah, they've already projected six times. Six times already projected in the year 2022. Uh, Where are we at? That's sick. Six times over the next how many months? That's just just this year. That's just this year. It's just this year. So. And what they try to do is they try to raise the interest rate so that people won't borrow as much money. But what's going to happen is they're going to raise the interest rate so high that it's going to stop people from taking out loans and the whole system's going to flip. Yeah, so so this right here, um, let's, let's see if we're reading the right thing. So the Federal Reserve is ready to raise the interest rate soon despite the, the war. Uh, said on Wednesday, the bank is on track to start raising interest rates this month. Uh, likely by a quarter percentage point in an effort to combat inflation, which is the highest it's been in nearly 40 years. Uh, the average gas price that approached 366 per gallon, hit all time 7.9% uh, interest rates. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, so it's, it's, about to get, it's about to get very scary, my friends. So. It's about to get very scary. So, um, 
I'm going to thank each and every one of you for hopping on here this evening to to learn a little bit more uh, about who we are, uh, Mark, about me, uh, about what we do for people. And um, I just want to let each and every one of you know that, guys, you were born to win and succeed. And no matter what you're going through today, you got to hold your head up high. Even though the world around you may seem like it's crumbling in, um, the light inside of you is going to shine bright. But with that being said, guys, you have a wonderful and blessed evening. Mark, do you have anything you, you want to say before we close it out? Brian? No, Coach. I appreciate your time tonight. Thanks for educating us. And thanks for educating me and uh, bringing me into this business to help educate families. And it's just a blessing to be able to do that. So, guys, if you want any other information, just click the link in our bio and set up a free strategy session. We'll educate you for free. We'll, uh, we'll get you moving along the way to protect and preserve your wealth moving forward uh, to protect your assets in the future. So appreciate you. God bless. And we'll see you uh, on the next live.